All right, please speak. I'm going to regulate a watch. I've got this little rig here that uh, had a gentleman make for me a long time ago. This is uh, a big chunk of aluminum here, and it's on a really nice stand here. And the stand can rotate, so I can get various positions. So this is homemade stuff. So anyway, I've got this uh, pocket watch. It's a vintage pocket watch. I fixed this a long time ago. Um, I think it's running okay, but let's have a look. So. I'm going to put it in like this. It's a little clumsy, and I may remake this whole thing at some point in time, so it's a little less clumsy. But I just strap it down, kind of like, um, kind of like the astronauts in Apollo 13. So the watch is now strapped down. Then I have a microphone, and this microphone is actually the end piece of. It's just a microphone from an iPhone uh, headset. And I just cut off the uh, earbud part and end up with a pretty good microphone. And I've got some software that can boost that, boost the gain on it. This thing has a little slot in it here. And I've got some uh, tissue paper this to push up on this. So it ends up being like that. So then I go to my watch escapement analyzer software. And it is called the E-Timer. And let me just point to this for a second. There it is there. This is E-Timer. Um, and it's a really good program. And what I do is I, uh, I'm going to rotate this in all five positions. So I'm going to start averaging in positions. And here we go. I'm not going to talk when this happens because I think I'm using the exact same mic for uh, talking and for doing this. Okay, now it wants me to go in pendant up position. So there it is here, and I just rotate this like so, like this. So this is pendant up position. The lighting is a little poopy, but then I just go back and I hit, I go up here and I hit run again. And now I got the uh, third position, which is dialed down. So back here again, and I just rotate this, and I start with dial down again. I think my wife just opened the garage. Now I need position 5, which is pin it down, as you can see, hit run, And now the last position that I have to do is I have to flip this sideways. So I need to take this out like this and just put the watch in like this because it's pendant left. Like that. That should be good like this. A little bit of a twist in the rubber band, but that doesn't matter. I want to get a clamping, I want to design a clamping motion here so to clamp this, so. And then I just push this sideways like so, and then, as you can see, and then I hit run again.
and there are my results. So the average is 17 seconds a day. I have a big beat error that's no good. So that needs to be corrected. My amplitude is averaging at 235 right there. And I've done all five positions. Then it gives me the delta, the plus 50 degrees, or 50 seconds per day is a plus and minus. So that's a swing here. And if you can see the position five is 51. Um, pretty drastic. Uh, pennant up was 25 here. And the amplitudes were actually not too bad. The beat error is pretty bad here, so I need to fix that beat error on there. And that's it. And the signal, actually this waveform actually looks pretty good. It's not too bad, although I saw other waveforms in there that were a little bit questionable and probably has to do with the beat being so far off. So what I need to do is I need to disassemble this watch and then I need to, let's see, is that, there we go. I need to dis disassemble the watch and take out the uh, the balance cock and they, and then take the uh, collet for the hairspring um, and just put a screwdriver in there and then rotate it and I'll figure out whether it's left or right but the the pallet fork the opening has to be absolutely lined up when it's when that balance is centered impulse jewel to, to the uh, banking pins uh, right into the pallet fork all in one line and that means I've got the near zero bead error so um, that's obviously not lined up which means that the hairspring is either left or right of that center uh, just a bit anyway that's a quick video on the uh, thing I rigged up again the watch escapement analyzer software is is brilliant it's really good to to use to um, to uh, look at where you are with respect to these signals and what they mean and one more thing I want to mention, make sure I've got my focusing on there. So just one more thing is I downloaded this mechanical, however you say this, Wittichi or something. Um, and this is, this is a tester as well. But the booklet they have online for this, um, I just made a little booklet and it describes the waveforms. And it also describes um, in there uh, the definitions of rate deviation and beat error, what beat error is, um, what lift angle is, which is typically 51 degrees, and then it gets into some of the uh, signals that are not good. So it just it goes into measurements and it tells you exactly when these signals happen in the uh, in the escapement. And then down in the back here. It provides a couple of um, examples of, you know, unlock unlocking is too strong here. The uh, escapement uh, fitting is too strong. The escapement fitting is too weak. Um, and what do we have here? This is detecting um, uh, what is it? Rough pivot. So rough pivot of the balance wheel staff uneven pivot or or pivots are squared, so that's the actual pivot that's sticking up in through the jewel and the cap jewel. Here there's little leftovers here and that's saying that the it's grazing the balance wheel and the hairspring, so the hairspring is grazing the balance wheel here, I think. Yeah, it's something like that. And then this one here is a tooth of the escape wheel penetrates directly into the impulse plane. So that's when you've got nothing here. So this little booklet you can download this. I'll just show you this again so you can just freeze it and look for the website. And that's the name up in the corner here, just so you can see that. And just Google that, and I've got the PDF file, and I just took from page 4 to page 19, just because it explains the waveforms really well and what you're looking for with these waveforms. And so when you're looking at this, you're, you're looking at these waveforms and the, the three different positions of when things happen. Um, and you're looking for the distance here, and you're also looking for the inconsistency in the waveform. You're looking for leftovers on the side, and maybe leftovers in the middle. So, uh, anyway, that's my video. This is a pretty good software. It's called Watch Escapement Analyzer and Timer, and it's called eTimer. So, recommend buying this. It's uh, it is the software that you're going to need to work on escapements and see whether your watch is actually running well or not. So, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video today.